The story of blindness begins on a rush hour morning in an undisclosed city. As the traffic lights turn green, a young Japanese professional is struck blind for no apparent reason, blocking all traffic behind him. With the other irritated drivers blasting their horns and generating a commotion, the Japanese man is approached by a few concerned individuals who claim that he is blind. One of them offers to transport him home, which he accepts. As they drive away, the blinded man describes his sudden affliction as an expanse of dazzling white, as if he is swimming in milk. When they arrive at his place, he is dropped off in the middle of the road and left, worried. Fortunately, his rescuer returns to take him to his apartment. They eventually reach the Japanese man's upscale apartment, but the rescuer immediately enters the home to look inside without permission. As soon as the man assures his rescuer that he will be fine waiting for his wife to return, the rescuer flees with the car keys and steals the vehicle. Later that afternoon, when the Japanese man's wife returns home, she scolds him for the mess, but he insists that he is blind. Thinking he is just joking, his wife tries to check if it's true. When his blindness is confirmed, they went to the nearest clinic and she takes him to a local ophthalmologist. The ophthalmologist tests his eyes and finds nothing wrong with his vision, despite the fact that he cannot see. The doctor recommends further evaluation at a hospital for a more thorough examination and diagnosis. Among the doctor's patients are an old man with a black eye patch, a woman wearing dark glasses, and a young boy. Later that evening, the car thief evades a police checkpoint, abandoning the Japanese man's vehicle as he flees down the street. After a few steps, he is similarly struck blind. During a dinner with his wife, the doctor describes the unusual case of sudden blindness that afflicted the Japanese man. Elsewhere in the city, a woman with dark glasses goes to a bar where she encounters the barman. Following a John appointment at a premium hotel, she is later discovered to be a call girl. After her service, she becomes the third victim of the strange blindness. The thief is escorted by the police to his residence, but his wife rejects him, so the police take him outside. The next morning, the doctor awakens to discover that he, too, has gone blind. He fears he might have been infected by his patient the previous day, and he worries even more that he may have infected his wife as well. He tries to keep his wife away from him, but she defies his attempts to keep her at arm's length and assures him that she will be safe. The young boy also becomes infected, and several more residents throughout the city are struck blind, causing considerable panic. The government declares a state of emergency and organizes a quarantine for the blind in a local dilapidated asylum. When a hazmat crew arrives to take the doctor, his wife joins him in the van, claiming she has gone blind to accompany him into isolation. The doctor and his wife are the first to arrive at the asylum and agree to keep her sight a secret. Several more people arrive, including the woman with dark glasses, the Japanese man, the car thief, and the young boy. Initially, the woman with dark glasses wonders why the couple knows the quarantine area so well. They claim that they explored the area before the newcomers arrived. A struggle breaks out between the Japanese man and the car thief, but the doctor intervenes and effectively takes over leadership of the ward. However, he finds that he can't maintain control over the situation. The young boy advised them that he needed to urinate, so the group immediately walked together to the restroom. As they walked, the thief began touching the woman, prompting her to kick his leg, causing him to be injured. Due to their eagerness to tend to the wound, the young boy left and wet his pants. Lacking an emergency kit, they had the thief remove his shirt to use it to stop the bleeding. The next day, more blind individuals arrived at the asylum, including some they had encountered before, such as the Japanese man's wife. The Japanese man is then reunited with his wife, who has become nearly catatonic due to her sudden blindness. When they saw the authorities, the couple requested an emergency kit, but their request was deprived of. She tried using the emergency phone, but no one answered. The doctor's wife, who is still her sight, offers to act as the eyes for her companions. As more blind individuals are crowded into the deteriorating asylum, overcrowding and a complete lack of outside support cause hygiene and living conditions to decline rapidly. Soon, the walls and floors are covered in dirt and human waste. The doctor's wife stumbles across the elderly man with the eye patch, who explains the state of the world outside. The abrupt blindness, now known as the white sickness, has spread worldwide, with hundreds of new cases reported each day. Desperate, the authoritarian government resorts to increasingly cruel measures to combat the disease. With no more people wandering around, the traffic problem has been resolved. The guards at the facility become increasingly hostile. During one load of incoming detainees, a man strays too far from the group and is killed by the troops, along with two other people caught in the crossfire. A shovel is thrown over the wall, allowing the blind to bury the corpses. 
the doctor's wife guided by the guards to retrieve the shovel, without them knowing that she can see. The doctor arranges a meeting with his companions to help bury the corpses, but the newcomers, led by an ex-barman who declares himself King of Ward 3, refuse to assist, leaving the doctor powerless. The government refuses to allow basic medicines in, making a simple infection potentially fatal. To end the suffering, the thief approaches a guard to be shot. Living conditions deteriorate further when an armed group of men, led by the ex-barman, seizes control of the meager food supply. The doctor's wife complains about the extortion, and the barman tells her that he won't forget her voice. The woman responds that she won't forget his face, which surprises the barman. Upon returning to their ward, the doctor's wife collects their jewelry and other valuables, even though it is against their will, as it is necessary to obtain food supplies controlled by the barman. It is then that the doctor discovers that one of the thugs had been blind even before the epidemic began. Because the food is only delivered in exchange for goods, which serves as a form of humiliation, the doctor loses his appetite. Facing the danger of famine and the despair of being unable to care for himself, the doctor seeks comfort from the woman with dark glasses in a moment of profound weakness. After she comforts him, they begin to make out. Both regret it afterward, especially when they hear the doctor's wife talking and realize they weren't alone and that she had witnessed most of their encounter. Although the doctor's wife no longer trusts her husband, she continues to assist them and, in the end, forgives both the woman and her husband. The next day, the King of Ward 3 demands women in exchange for food. In response, the doctor's wife pleads with the guards to provide them with food, but they insist that they have already given it, and it is up to the blind group to distribute it. Since no women are willing to volunteer, the doctor offers to let his wife volunteer if she wishes, rather than let their companions die of hunger, despite his own pride. The desperate women volunteer one by one to serve the men in Ward 3. Although the Japanese man does not want his wife to volunteer, he cannot stop her. Once the decision is made, the women immediately walk to Ward 3 to make the trade. Upon arrival, the women are distributed among the men in Ward 3. Meanwhile, the doctor's wife is recognized by the barman, who claims her as his slave for punishment due to her previous complaints, along with the Japanese man's wife. When the women return, one of them has been savagely beaten to death by the attackers. Faced with famine and determined to get revenge, the doctor's wife takes a pair of scissors and goes immediately to Ward 3. In a fit of rage, she murders the king of Ward 3 with the scissors. One of the men threatens her that they will no longer receive food, but she counters by threatening that someone in Ward 3 will be killed if they don't provide food. This creates widespread fear that a riot might break out. They make a plan to obtain food and prepare for the possible dangers that might arise. Meanwhile, one of the women sets Ward 3 on fire, leading to a chaotic fight among the wards that results in the asylum burning down. The majority of the detainees die in the fire. The doctor's wife calls the guards for help, but only then do the few survivors realize that the military has abandoned its posts. They are now free to explore the city, but it is in squalor and disorder. The entire population is blind in a metropolis destroyed by vermin, dirt, and dead bodies. The doctor's wife guides her husband, the Japanese couple, the elderly man, the woman with dark glasses, and the young child through the damaged streets in search of food and clean clothes. Everywhere they turn, people are squatting in dilapidated buildings, and society as they knew it has vanished. She and her husband leave their companions in the relative safety of an abandoned cafe and go in search of food and clean clothes. In a supermarket full of stumbling blind people, with no food left, she goes to the basement and discovers a storeroom full of food supplies, which she loads into bags. As she prepares to leave to meet her husband outside, she is besieged by hungry individuals who smell the food she is carrying. Her husband, who has adapted to his blindness, comes to her rescue, and together they manage to escape the chaotic supermarket. The couple then strolls through the city with food and clothes for their companions. As they walk the streets, it is noticeable that the blind people are joyfully bathing in the rain, as if feeling a renewed sense of hope despite their hunger and the challenges they face. The couple eventually returns to their friends. After eating and resting overnight, the next morning, they decide to continue their journey to the doctor's house. The doctor and his wife, along with their new family, finally return to the doctor's house and make it their permanent home, which pleases everyone. The women happily bathe in the bathroom, exchanging opinions about their beauty. After bathing, the old man confesses that he wants to be with the woman for the rest of his life because he has fallen in love, and the woman feels the same way. The family had a wonderful feast that evening. The doctor's wife has completely forgiven her husband for making love with a woman with dark glasses, and in return, he makes love to her, claiming that when they are together like this, he can actually see her through his touch. 
Just as the family is getting used to their new way of life, one morning while having breakfast, the Japanese man regains his sight, which surprises everyone. This gives the others hope that their blindness might be lifted as swiftly and unexpectedly as it arrived. As everyone celebrates, the doctor's wife goes outside and stands on the porch, staring up at the white overcast sky, thinking to herself, I'm going blind, as she looks downwards, revealing the metropolis before her. For more videos similar to this, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. Thank you for watching.